In this video, we will look at lipoproteins. Uh, lipoproteins are basically fat, lipo, and proteins. Um, and there are different types of lipoproteins. Uh, you can say that there are four types. These are cholemicrons, VLDL, very low density lipoproteins, LDL, low density lipoproteins, and HDL, high density lipoproteins. Here I am just drawing how they will be represented in this diagram. And if we look at the composition or the amounts of fat and proteins in each of these lipoproteins, we can see that the protein content increases from cholemicrons to the high density lipoproteins. Basically, it means that cholemicron, cholemicrons have a lot of lipids and little proteins. LDL, low density lipoproteins, have a bit more proteins, but still mainly lipids. And then the high density lipoproteins have nearly half half, half proteins, half lipids. So it is actually important to understand the different protein to lipid ratio in each of these lipoproteins. Uh, because it somewhat relates to their function. So for example, LDL, the low density lipoprotein, actually contains a lot of lipids that are cholesterol. But we say that this is bad because if we have a lot of LDLs, it means that we have a lot of cholesterol, which is not good. Um, the lipid content of HDL, so the lipid content of the high density lipoprotein, actually contains less cholesterol and actually is responsible for picking up excess cholesterol from tissue and then bringing it back to the liver. And so we say HDL is good. So LDL is bad, HDL is good. In reality though, LDL is not that bad. It's just when we have high amounts of LDL that it's bad. We need LDL, we need cholesterol. If this doesn't make sense, don't worry, we will try to follow a story for each of these lipoproteins and see what they do um, in our body. Let us begin with cholemicrons. Cholemicrons are responsible for transporting fats that we have absorbed in our diet and delivering it to body tissues. So here we have the stomach and part of the small intestine. Our diet consists of carbohydrates, fats and proteins of course. These get digested and then absorbed in the duodenum of the small intestine. Let us zoom into the small intestine here. Here I am drawing some intestinal cells. And under these cells we have blood vessels. On the surface of the small intestinal cells, so on the apical side, we have a sodium glucose transporter, which takes in one glucose for two sodium molecules. Glucose is then um, reabsorbed into the blood. The fats in the diet arrive in the small intestine as lipid droplets. The lipid droplets are digested and emulsified into micelles, which are then absorbed um, in, into the intestinal cells um, as monoglycerides and fatty acids. And also cholesterol is absorbed. The intestinal cells will then package the monoglycerides, fatty acids, cholesterol, and proteins called apoproteins to form what's known as the cholemicron. So all these things are packaged up into cholemicrons. Cholemicrons is predominantly lipids with little proteins, with little apoproteins. The cholemicrons also contain phospholipids within its structure. The cholemicrons is actually absorbed into the lymphatic system before moving into the blood, into the blood vessel via the subclavian vein. The cholemicrons then circulate around the body, delivering lipids, delivering triglycerides to tissues that need it for energy. The remaining remnants of the cholemicrons will then finish and arrive at the liver. So here we have the liver. The cholemicrons will bind onto LDL receptors and will be brought into the hepatic cells. Okay, let us leave the cholemicrons and look at the other lipoproteins. And in order to do this, we have to start, uh, start where, we, when, where we left off with glucose. So here we have glucose. The liver also receives the glucose that we absorbed earlier. It takes it in 
and through the process known as glycolysis, it makes pyruvate. Pyruvate can move into the mitochondria of the hepatocyte and become acyl-CoA. Acyl-CoA can then get transported out of the mitochondria and can be eventually converted to cholesterol using an important enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase. Please know that we are missing many chemical reactions, but this is just a simple overview. So cholesterol is made through acyl-CoA. An important reaction step is with the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase. There is actually a cholesterol-lowering agent that specifically targets this enzyme called statins. So statins are HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, thus stopping the synthesis of cholesterol. Going back to acyl-CoA, acyl-CoA can also be converted to malonyl-CoA to form later fatty acids. Glycolysis um, can also synthesize glycerol. When glycerol and one, fat and one fatty acid combine, they form what's known as monoacylglycerol. Then with another two fatty acids can form triacylglycerol. I only wrote triglycerol to make it fit, but to be, it's actually meant to be triacylglycerol, also known as triglyceride. The triglyceride, cholesterol, as well as apoproteins and phospholipids, then can get packaged up through the Golgi apparatus to form a lipoprotein. So lipoproteins can look something like this. It contains proteins, the apoproteins, triglycerides, phospholipids, and cholesterol. The liver cannot actually make all the lipoproteins. They actually make two. They make either the empty HDL, whose main function is picking up excess cholesterol from the body and bringing it back to the liver, or the liver can make VLDL, very low density lipoproteins, whose main function is for the transportation of fatty acids, transportation of the triglycerides to body tissues. Remember that VLDL and empty HDL have different lipid concentration or composition. They are completely different. VLDL has a lot more lipids, especially triglycerides, because VLDL will go into the blood and transport these triglycerides to body tissues that need it for energy or for storage. There is adipose tissue that stores fat, and there are tissues that use fatty acids for energy. VLDL comes across lipases, which will liberate the fatty acids, um, and this will basically change the VLDL to become IDL, also known as intermediate density lipoprotein. The fatty acids that are liberated can either be stored as triglycerides in adipose tissue or used as energy by some tissues, including the heart muscle cells. The intermediate density lipoprotein, the IDL, can be converted um, through circulation um, to become LDL. LDL's main function is to transport cholesterol to body tissues. This means that it contains uh, more, a, lot, a lot more cholesterol than any other lipoproteins. So here are some tissues. Tissues or cells need cholesterol to make hormones, um, as well as maintaining cell membrane integrity. So after LDL gives the, these tissues cholesterol, LDL can then return to the liver by binding onto LDL receptors and it gets endostized. So here we have our LDL. The LDL can then either be recycled in the Golgi apparatus to make more lipoproteins or can be excreted through bile. Excess cholesterol gets excreted in bile because the body uh, knows not to have, uh, knows when there is a lot of cholesterol. And so this is one way of basically um, excreting cholesterol through bile. Now finally, uh, we go to our last lipoprotein, which is the HDL. Here we have the empty HDL. The MTA, empty HDL's main function is to pick up excess cholesterol. 
So, or cholesterol in general. So it enters the circulation. Um, and here we have tissues that have excess cholesterol or cells that have excess cholesterol. And the HDL will pick up these excess cholesterol and basically return it to the liver. The full HDL um, with the cholesterol will bind onto uh, receptors called scavenger receptors on the hepatocytes. And then it will get endocytized. The HDL can then either be recycled through the Golgi or excreted, depending on how much cholesterol the body needs. So that was it. Um, I hope it made sense and I hope you understood the functions of the cholimicrons, the VLDL, the LDL, and HDL. Um, and also, thank you for watching.